This week on the Auto Car Show, we bring you an exclusive review of Honda's much awaited people mover, the Mobilio. Then we drive the maddest version of Mercedes's smallest sedan, the CLA 45 AMG. And we hop onto BMW Motorrad's tech laden monster roadster, the S1000R. And Hormuz tells you what's buzzing in the Indian auto industry in school. I'm in Jakarta, Indonesia to drive this really special and large Honda Mobilio. It's a seven seater based on the Brio and the Amaze and it has a tremendous amount of space inside. Now Indonesia is the home of the MPV market. It's the home of seven seaters. It gave us the Qualys, then the Innova, it gave us cars like the Tavera, which is called the Isuzu Panther here. And now we have this Honda. The cars already sold 25,000 units in just four months, meaning there's something really special about it. Let's take a closer look and see how good it really is. Five minutes into our morning drive, and I sort of understand why most Indonesians prefer to own MPVs. The logic is pretty clear. If you're going to spend hour after hour in your car, it's better to be as comfortable as possible. So in Indonesia, very few people buy tiny hatchbacks and small, medium-sized sedans, they're all but unheard of. As you can imagine, styling is really important. The Mobilio, despite being a big bulbous MPV, is pretty attractive. Honda has used bold lines and smart details to amp it up and it really seems to have worked. Of course, if you look at the car head on, it does look like a Brio. It's got similar headlights and a similar grill, but they've made a big effort, Honda. They have, they put in some real styling here. Nice matte black section. The chin of the car is new. Of course, a pillar back. It's completely different. Just take a look at the side line of the car. This fantastic door line. It isn't straight. It's got this kink in it. They call it a lightning strip. It looks fantastic. And look at this rear pillar, it's floating. They've put a glass all the way around to the back and it really does make it look something special. The biggest difference from the Brio, of course, is this massive 2650mm wheelbase. And that gives Honda the chance to give you this massive rear door and the acres of space in the back. What you also get, of course, is two seats in the rear, a third row. And that's what makes it special. Equally impressive is how well Honda has used the space. MPVs are all about maximizing available space and Honda has mastered this art. As on the Amaze and Brio, space on the inside is much more than you expect. Now Honda has put a lot of work into this car, but one place they have skimped a bit on is the interior. The dashboard is the same as the Brio and the Amaze. It's not something people like too much, and this is going to be a bit of a sore point. Honda, however, is expected to spruce up the Mobilio for India. A two-tone dashboard with more chrome is an obvious upgrade, and a doubled-in touchscreen audio system is likely too. What the slim dashboard and these really narrow seats on the Brio do, however, is give you a lot of space in the back. There's plenty of legroom, there's good thigh support from this high seat, and the seat back is really comfortable as well. But this is the best bit. Just like the Ertiga, you can adjust the back row so that you have enough space here and you can also use the 6th and 7th seat. Pretty smart. The third row isn't as comfortable as the Ertigas, however. Stepping in is easy enough due to the big rear doors, but the seat is placed low so you sit with your knees up. While this MPV shares most of its mechanical bits with the Brio and Amaze, the Mobilio is much larger and heavier, and as a result, needs more power. So this time around, the petrol engine actually comes from the city, making a fizzy 117 bhp at a high 6600 rpm. This motor comes with a torque boost resonator in the inlet. The 1.5 petrol will be joined by Honda's 100 horsepower 1.5 diesel, which could prove to be the most popular engine in India. The petrol we are driving, however, is likely to be even nicer. 
Now this updated 1.5 engine like we've seen in the city has a lot better bottom end. It's a lot more responsive. It takes off in a shot once you put your foot down. And I can even do this in third at say around 30 kilometers an hour. Foot down, car's already moving before I finish telling you about it. And that's not something you get when you drive a Brio or an Amaze Petrol. It's, it's really nice. The best bit, however, is that fizzy, zingy top end. This is an engine that just loves to rev, and despite the weight of the Mobilio, it feels rapid. It really does have a lot of grunt. It's got a lot of performance, and the way the VTEC pulls to 7,000 RPM, wow, it just feels great. I just wish we had this engine in the Brio. That would make for one hot hatch. What's not so nice is that it's particularly loud. Now the insulation on this car isn't as good as that of the city. So when you downshift and you get the car in around 4,000, you get this really loud buzz. And when you accelerate really hard, you get a bit more engine noise than you expect. It's quite a din. What you also realize after carrying on a bit is that this car needs an additional sixth gear. Either that or higher gearing because right now the engine feels strained at cruising speed. With highway speeds getting quicker and quicker in India, Honda could look at lengthening the gearing a bit. With large 15-inch rims, 185mm of ground clearance and a long wheelbase, ride quality however is pretty comfortable on the Mobilio. The Mobilio has been set up to take bumps really well and even bigger ones don't really upset it. Thing is, the Indonesian roads are just as bad as ours. So, in a way that's a bit of an advantage. We'll get a car in India that already rides well. And that's pretty good. Even more impressive is that there's almost no pitching. Absolutely no xylo like flip-flop and the Mobilio responds smartly to the steering as well. What seven-seater customers will obviously love is that this car drives a bit like the Ertiga. It's based on a hatchback and that's the reason it feels nice, light and agile to drive. It doesn't feel very different from driving a hatchback and that will be one of its key strengths. Mobilio is pretty nice even in the high-speed stuff. It gives you a lot of confidence because it doesn't roll too much and this allows you to point the car in the direction you want to go without having a bit of slop here and there. It's pretty nice, it's confidence inspiring and it allows you to drive this car like a hatch or a big sedan. Of course the Mobilio is very long and it's in the tighter stuff that you somehow get a feeling of the car being slightly unwieldy. Of course it's not as agile as a Brio, it can't be and here's where you need to pay a bit more attention to where the length of the car is. The Honda Mobilio comes across as a well-engineered, well-put-together package. The dashboard is a bit basic, it's the same as on the Brio and on the Amaze, and some customers aren't going to like that. But you do get two fantastic engines, the 1.5 petrol and the 1.5 diesel from the city. You get plenty of space in the back, and the third row is just about usable. If Honda prices this car right, specs it up just like they've done with the new city, it could be a car you'll be seeing a lot of on our streets. After the break, we find out whether Mercedes's smallest AMG sedan is really an AMG or not. And BMW's pricey roadster, the S1000R, scorches the tarmac.